Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and right now I'm walking on one of the hiking trails at Harrison Bay State Park in Harrison, Tennessee. And today I'm going to do a vlog test with the Sony a6700 and a lens that I think will be really great for vlogging. It's the Sony 11 millimeter f1.8. What a, whoa, I've gone off the trail already. But uh, that lens is super small, super light, and the camera is nice and small and light. And I just have a small handheld tripod under the camera and I'm holding it out. And I'll be honest with you, normally this is not the setup that I would use for vlogging. I use the DJI Pocket 2. It's featherweight, has a built-in gimbal, does 4K. So that's what I usually vlog with. But if I wanted to vlog with something that was a little bit higher quality, this might be the way to go. Now, some people always vlog with larger cameras like this, larger than a DJI Pocket 2, that is. But I really like the tininess and the lightweight of that setup. But like I say, if I was gonna do a vlog and I wanted the quality to be really good, this might be the way I would go. So right now I'm shooting uh, 4K 24. I've got my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second. I'm wide open at f1.8. And I have a three stop neutral density filter on so I can keep my shutter speed where it needs to be and that's 1 50th of a second on a 24 frames per second timeline. And this lens being 11 millimeters on a 1.5 crop, that means it's a 16.5 millimeter full frame equivalent. And I think uh, that's probably a little bit too wide for vlogging. I prefer something right around 20 millimeters full frame equivalent. And the good news is uh, this, well, this camera has, it has in-body image stabilization or Sony calls it steady shot, but the lens doesn't have any built-in stabilization. So that means I might be a little wobbly, but I'm also using what Sony calls active steady shot. And look at this trail I'm hiking. It is, it is not level. So I'm definitely bouncing around quite a bit as I hike over these rocks and around these trees. And I'm also scouting or trying to scout. I'm probably not doing a very good job while I'm hiking and vlogging, but I'm supposed to be looking for mushrooms because I'm gonna try to make some macro photos of mushrooms today as well. But let's get through this. But anyway, so you can be the judge of how the active steady shot is going. And I'll make a clip in a minute where I have the active steady shot turned off. There's the, you may not be able to see it, but there's the Chickamauga Lake right there. There's a couple of men out there in a fishing boat doing their thing. But right now active steady shot is turned on and active steady shot will actually reduce uh, the wideness of your lens. So this 16 and a half millimeter lens might end up being right around what I call the perfect sweet spot for a vlogging lens and that's 20 millimeters when active steady shot is turned on. So I'm gonna pause the video right now and turn active steady shot off so you can see the difference in how I'm framed up with this 11 millimeter lens, 16 and a half millimeters full frame equivalent and then what it looks like when I turn steady shot off. Let's see. Okay, now I have it on what's called standard steady shot which I believe that just has the, the IBIS in the camera on, but no, no uh, digital stabilization, which is what active steady shot is. And that's why, it's, that's why it zooms in a little bit. And you can see there's, there's, it's definitely a much wider shot, which actually while I'm looking at the camera, it looks pretty cool, but it shouldn't be. And I, I really can't tell as I'm hiking and just trying not to fall down on this rooty, hilly, bumpy, rocky trail, but I, it should probably be a little less steady with active steady shot turned off. This trail is not very long, and when you get to the end of it, it comes out at the lake. So 
I'll show you that. And then I'll turn steady shot back on. Actually, you can turn, I've got steady shot on, which I think is the Ibis. And I had active steady shot on. I think next I'll show you what it looks like with no stabilization whatsoever. But first, there's the lake. Woo! And I am overexposed in that full sun at 1.8, even with a three stop neutral density filter on. So let's get out of that light. Now I have steady shot turned completely off. No regular steady shot, no active steady shot, just walking in the woods with a ultra wide lens that's not stabilized and the camera not stabilized. So this might be kind of bumpy. Again, it's hard for me to tell while I'm actually shooting. And you know, we'll have to look or I'll have to look and you've already seen to see if having active steady shot on makes it usable in a situation like this. But this is what it looks like with no stabilization. And in just a moment, I'm gonna turn active back on. Okay, so here we are back with active steady shot. And I can definitely tell even while I'm hiking that I'm larger in the frame, but not too large. Like I wouldn't wanna do this with a lens where I fit just right in the frame and then turn active steady shot on because then I'd be like this and that's not good. So hopefully this framing, which I think is just about perfect, is also acceptably steady. And even though this camera is nice and small and light and this lens is just ridiculously light and I'm using the Rode Wireless Go version one as my microphone system, uh, I've got my, I've got my uh, exposure compensation set to zero. So however, the camera's framing it up, automatic ISO and my white balance is on automatic W, which is auto white balance that tries to get the whites just right, which is kind of the way I like it. Either that or I'll put it on sunny white balance. But anyway, even though this camera is, whoo, almost fell. Even though this camera is small and light and this 11 millimeter 1.8 lens is ridiculously light, it still is noticeably heavy compared to my DJI, what's that thing called? DJI Pocket 2, which has its own built-in wireless system. So that's why I use it, even though this probably looks better. Big step. But uh, this is certainly an option. And uh, I think there may come a day when there's a situation where I'm trying to make something that looks a little bit better than than my regular twice a week videos where I may use this. Now, if I'm doing something where I set a camera up and I just sit there and talk to it, then I use my Canon R6 Mark II is usually what I use when I'm just sitting there talking to a camera. But uh, even though some people I'm sure vlog with that, that's just too heavy for me to vlog with. But this is pretty light compared to even that camera. And that camera's pretty light compared to what some people log with. But uh, so there you have it. This concludes the test of the Sony A6700 with the 11 millimeter F1.8 wide open, three stop neutral density filter made by Maven. Great filters, try them out sometime. And I hope you found this uh, helpful to maybe decide whether or not you want to go with this system as your vlogging rig. I think it definitely works. And again, it's a little heavier than my normal rig, but definitely higher quality. And you can be the judge of how well the active steady shot works. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, a thumbs up's always appreciated. If you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.